All right, somebody woke up in a mood. Oh, look, it's the 12 yard line. <laughs> what happened to our show? <laughs> I know where this is going. We might have to make a correction. I could have chose my words better there. <gasps> Unleash the fury, man! Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hashtag Sports, where we're always trending. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button right now before we get into any of the particulars. Uh, as always, you can find all of our stuff on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. All episodes will be on iTunes and Spotify. Paul is looks like <laughs> you look like Smalls from so, the Sandlot. Yeah. So I just hit the uh, the height bar under my seat, and I sank to the floor. <laughs> There we go. Look at that. I'm back to normal yeah, height, everybody. He's sitting on a Lockport phone book. Don't let him fool you. <laughs> it's all right. Um, today's show is sponsored by Mr. Rogers Homes and in association with Crier.co. Um, 2023 charity for uh, Hashtag Sports is the Williams Syndrome Foundation. So uh, that was everything that was in the description of the video as well. Uh, Joe, Paul, uh, Joe uh, Ryan, thanks for joining us. Thanks for acknowledging we, us this time around. We, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm usually here with, you know, Captain Kenyon over here. <laughs> he can run. So here's the deal, guys. Uh, the Buffalo Bills did a lot at the draft, and we covered a lot about it, uh, what they did. They helped Josh Allen. They got him some weapons. Uh, with the departure of Leslie Frazier, we did not see a influx of individuals that were added to the defense. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at what Sean McDermott plans on doing with the defense that he has in 2023. And will the philosophy of the defense be a little bit different? Because as Paul said on previous episodes, McDermott has a tendency to be a little bit conservative with his defensive play calling and his philosophy. And it mm -hmm. seemed like Frazier was the guy, <laughs> you know, shocker. He, he played on the 85 bears. Why wouldn't he want to be more aggressive? So that being said, uh, let's take a look at the – this is what the 1-2 depth chart has for our lads for the Buffalo Bills going into 2023. Obviously, there's some more names, and I'll scroll over for them. But this is the top two depth chart that we have. And just, just um, for clarity's sake, our lads is just a guess, right? No official depth charts have oh, yeah. been released. That's, yeah, that's – we're months away from an official depth chart, right? So you just got to use the resources that are out there. Our lads just has what they think. Absolutely. And at the conclusion of this video, I'll put the link in the um, in the in the description as well for you guys. But, you know, taking a look at this, a lot of guys are the same. Mm -hmm. So, Ryan, I want to start with you on this one. And I'll go to Joe. Do you think that they're going to change up the philosophy at all moving from Frazier to McDermott? I think I think they have to figure something out at the middle linebacker position. They have to figure out some way to cover up the fact that they don't have a true middle linebacker, right? Tyrell Dodson's not the answer. They're, they're not probably not going to move Bernard or Williams inside uh, th at this point. AJ Klein, I mean, again, he's a depth guy at best, good against the run, not good against much else. So they've got to figure out a way to cover up that middle linebacker position. That may be a scheme change. Maybe you see a lot more Taylor Rapp, three safety situation, along with, you know, three members of the the cornerback. Uh, group. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I think, you know, the comments that Brandon Bean made after the draft, I think it's fairly telling that they, they still plan to shore up the defensive front a little bit more. So I think those are ways that they're going to try to cover up the middle linebacker position. So I don't know if it's a McDermott thing necessarily, but I think it comes out of necessity um, because of the talent that they've not been able to add to fill in that position, um, that now gaping hole that was left by Tremaine Edmonds. I, I agree with Ryan about the middle linebacker, absolutely. But you also look back at previous result, previous results under Leslie Frazier, and that's another thing you got to look at defensively as to why, you know, Stefan Diggs, when we lost uh, in, in the game and everyone's talking about Stefan Diggs getting so upset with Josh Allen, yeah, yeah, you know, he said at the Pro Bowl, he was like, I, he just doesn't understand why they can't get it together. And that applies to both the offense and the defense. Like, we look great in the offense, and we were talking off camera about how great this defense looked at the beginning of the season, forcing turnovers, things like that. But you can't always rely on turnovers. And so what happens when the turnovers stop? Because we saw last year when the turnovers stopped, the games got a lot tighter. 
like the games got a lot tighter. And with, you know, I hate to say this, but with the addition of Aaron Rodgers now in our division, you know, like there, there are some, you know, the Miami Dolphins coming up. Um, the offenses aren't getting any worse. You know, when you look at the AFC, a lot of great quarterbacks in the AFC. So something needs to be figured out. Now, do I think there will be a change in philosophy to a degree? Yes. You know, I think back to when uh, McDermott and Frazier, when Frazier was having his struggles, I think it was 2018, and McDermott took over for, what, two, three games. Well, there, we saw a little bit of a difference there. There was something that happened there that was a difference. The defense kind of, you know, put their foot down and, and they improved from then on. Then it went back to Frazier and they got things figured out. So I think things will change. And let's hope for the better. Yeah, and I think, you know, when you kind of look at the history that we've seen across between Frazier and McDermott, there were sometimes a struggle to get players in the right role. You know, like I know mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, the, I'm, I'm super excited about Taylor Rapp. Like, I am really excited about that acquisition. I can't wait to see what they do with him. I really, really, really think that's going to be a huge difference maker this year. Because once you lost Poyer, you lost that knife in the middle of your defense that you just kind of used to, you know, shank shank the other team in the yard uh, over the course of a game, right? Because Poyer accounted for a lot of tackles, and he and he was a player that you had to circle on the depth. You had to know where he was at all times. And when you lost Poyer, I, I think you saw that edge in the defense go. So you go get Taylor Rapp. Taylor Rapp plays a very similar role. But, um, you know, the, across the NFL, defenses are getting smaller, right? Because they're, they're getting faster. And that's why I think a player like Dorian Williams is interesting because his coverage grade is so high. I think he's somebody that gets to Ron Johnson off the field, right? Like in those third and seven situations, Dorian Williams is probably going to be out there, right? Whereas you're going to probably pull Teron off because uh, I'll be honest with you. um, You know, I'm not a big fan of the role that he plays and uh, you're committed to him. So you you can't get rid of him at this point. Like financially you're, you're committed to Teron Johnson, but from a, from a schematic standpoint, McDermott has a tendency to, to not, to not bring the heat. Right. And that's why you see the, the you know the drafting Greg Rousseau. That's why you see signing Von Miller. That's why you saw the drafting of Ed Oliver. He wants his front four to just get pressure because that's what they do. He doesn't want to give that help. Um, and I think that'll probably be the biggest adjustment is that we've kind of seen the Bills blitz an awful lot the last two years compared to where they were. And I don't know if you're going to see that with McDermott. Mar, I mean, it, don't you think that is probably to me looking at McDermott's history as a defensive coordinator versus Frazier. That's what I've kind of taken away the most. Well, it's weird because we're, we're seeing a lot of changes going on at one bills drive, especially with the draft and the off season acquisitions and some things that, are, that they're doing. And a lot of times we just kind of, it's almost lazy to say, Oh, well it's, you know, Josh Allen is you're paying your quarterback now. So you're going to have to cut corners here and there and that, well, if you look at this defense, if we just go by the, the starters that we have on there, you got, Taron Johnson in 18, Tredavious White in 17, Milano in 17, uh, Hayden Poyer came here in 17. Paul, what did we used to talk about with this defense and how it is? The longer that this defense plays together with the similar personnel is that you're going to get tells on these guys. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be able to figure out what's going on. I think that is the number one thing that it has benefited the Bills and has hurt the Bills, which how long they've been playing together and how they are. And they have tendencies. So what's what's the number one thing that when you come up to the line, when you're a quarterback, that you have to read? You have to read the safeties. Okay, if you put Hyde, Poyer, and Rapp in there in some personnel packages, the quarterback's going to be confused. So that that's that gives the edge to your defense. I think that's number one, the number one change that um, McDermott wanted to wanted to implement, and he got the opportunity to do that. In this past year, when both Hyde and Poyer went down, you brought in Johnson and Hamlin, and you knew Johnson wasn't it. But very what, quickly, you learned you, very quickly yeah. that that project but, did not go well, and but, and and Jaquan Johnson had been here for a while. There was no excuse for that. Oh, exactly. But the thing on the other side of that that I think was the benefit for the Buffalo Bills was we always asked ourselves, could Poyer play Hyde's role? And he did. He had Hamlin in there who was coming up, you know, playing in the box and, and playing up and being that torpedo. And then you had, you know, you had Poyer playing over the top. Like, okay, well, Poyer can play over the top. With the uncertainty of Hyde, 
now you could you could play Poyer and Rap if you want. You know, mm-hmm. and, and and Rap could be the hammer that goes down in the box. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing is, you have so many uncertainties. I I love because for me, you have a bunch of question marks and you have a a, a a bunch of possibilities with the defense with these guys that are on the on the screen right now that you see. You could put Dorian Williams in there and take Teron Johnson off. That's fine. You can keep him on there if you want. Mm-hmm. You know, you could you could do a bunch of different things, and by doing that, by changing up looks, by changing up a bunch of things that you do. Teams are going to be coming into the, the 2023 saying, okay, this is the Bills that have like six guys that have started for four or five years. We know what they're going to do. If you start mixing stuff up on some of these teams and the quarterbacks aren't going to be able to catch up by the time the Bills score 21 points, then you're going to find yourself at, a, at an advantage. But I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, 100%. A Tiger doesn't change his stripes. He wants to rush four, drop seven, and cover everybody across. But I wouldn't be – I mean, why do you pick up a guy like Dorian Williams then? Bring him off the edge? I mean, four four nine, he can get in the backfield pretty darn quick if he has to. Yeah, but he was not brought in to blitz, man. Like that is not. No, no, I understand. That that. Not he's six one. Like what you what you gonna do inside? <laughs> You're not. Well, come on. You you're telling suck. me they won't put him up on the end of the line to fake a blitz and you can go to the flat. Listen, that's why you have AJ Klein, the expendable AJ Klein. How dare you say AJ I, listen, Klein? Will I would cover love to hear some AJ. Year. I would love to see some AJ Klein slander. Ryan, how do how do the Bills bring pressure this year <laughs> without without Von Miller? Right. So let's just be honest. Right. You're going to be yeah. without Von for a bit. So is that yeah. why somebody like AJ Klein finds himself on the roster right now? Because you just got to kind of find a way to generate some pressure because. Rousseau, Basham, Shaq Lawson, it just didn't happen once Vaughn was gone. Yeah, I mean, they, they have to figure out how they can bring pressure with four, five guys at most, right? Because that, that's mm-hmm. what McDermott likes to do. So they've got to figure out between Rousseau, Basham, Epinesa, Oliver, Settle, and Phillips. Like, those are the guys that have to figure out how to bring pressure. And that's why I wouldn't be surprised if they went out and got, you know, it's not going to be Jadavion Clowney. But they're going to go out and get, you know, maybe it's a Matt Ioannidis who, you know, one of the best, you know, guys up the middle when it comes to quarterback pressures. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's a, you know, I don't know, (laughs) maybe it's a Frank Clark, maybe it's a Yannick Ngakwe, a guy like that who can bring pressure and experience pass rusher off the edge because we've seen Rousseau is far more effective when he has a veteran on the other side that can bring pressure and win their yeah. one-on-one matchups can draw those double teams periodically. Rousseau is so much more receptive, which is why I wouldn't be surprised. Again, they bring in some type of a veteran to fill that role. They don't need them to fill the role for 17 weeks plus the playoffs. They need them for eight, nine, 10 weeks until Von Miller can come back. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that's where, that's where this comes from, but they're, they're going to have to these guys that they've been waiting on taking a jump, it has to be this year if they're going to be right. successful. It's got to yeah. be Rousseau, Basham, Epinesa. They brought Lawson back for stability, but Lawson's not a pass rusher, right? Lawson's a you know he's an anchor on the end. He's gonna he's gonna close off that that edge. He's gonna keep the run going inside. Um, that's what his role is. He's gonna chip in for maybe five sacks in the season, but he's not a defensive end that brings pressure. So that's where I'll again Oliver Jones settle up the middle. Phillips is really good at bringing pressure up the middle. Um, but they're going to add bodies. It was pretty telling in Bean's press conference that they're going to add bodies along that defensive line. He was frustrated that they didn't add anybody in the draft at that defensive line position. And that that's why more so that Williams pick screamed desperation to me mm-hmm. and, and panic because mm-hmm. there was a run of some, some pretty decent talent at that linebacker defensive tackle position right before the Williams sure. pick. And it just seemed yeah. like he really, really wanted to go defensive tackle, you know, lineman position and their their guy got scooped up a couple of picks ahead of them. So, let me let me go to Joe on this. So, when you take a look at what's on the screen right now, mm-hmm. I see three players that might not make the 53 man roster. And they're players that this team kind of invested young or kind of invested in the draft or in mm-hmm. that undrafted free agency, right? And those players just haven't materialized right i think we can all kind of agree that aj epinesa you drafted because of need right Mm -hmm. i just heard ryan say dorian williams was drafted probably out of need right um you look at terrell dodson you look at terrell bernard right these are players that you've had on your roster for a bit of time now 
And I'll be honest with you. I mean, they, they would make the Raiders, you know, they yeah. would make the Jaguars. They mm -hmm. would make the Browns. I don't think they make Buffalo. Right. So at what point do you have to say goodbye to those players that you had invested early in um, mm -hmm. or invested some resources in and have kept around, but simply don't help your football team the way that you need. Like their skill sets don't fit what you need anymore. And right. is Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean going to recognize that? Right. Yeah. And this is why a part of me really wished after Leslie Frazier and I say he was stepping down um, that we, that we would have gotten a defensive coordinator. Cause I feel like uh, coach McDermott's like going to be in two separate places. Right. Cause as a head coach, you feel like a certain amount of like, that was my pick, right? Like I picked that guy. You want to keep him on the roster, give him another chance, all those things. As a coordinator, you kind of have a little more wiggle room where you could say, well, you know, this guy isn't working out. You do with, you do with them what you like. I'm just letting you know from my perspective, this guy is not working out. Um, mm -hmm. I would agree with you that, that you know, you, you look down at someone like AJ Epineza, should he be on this team right now? You know, maybe not. Uh, another another uh, thing that I, I think about when it comes to Coach McDermott compared to Leslie Frazier is I went back and I looked at the 2012, 2013, 2014 Panthers, um, and I looked back at the Eagles previously to that, teams that Coach McDermott, you know, was defensive coordinator for. Um, and you know what? They didn't have as much rotating pieces as the Bills normally do on defense. So That's what's right. going to happen there? You know, can McDermott say, listen, you know, you look at like Greg Hardy or someone like that from that team, they they were in there 70, 80 percent of the snaps. Mm -hmm. You look at last year's Buffalo Bills team and I have it up right now. I'm just looking. Gregory Rousseau was the leading defensive end when it came to percentage of time on the field. And he was just on the field just over 43 yep. percent. So so like obviously. Yeah, that's going to be a big change for the Buffalo Bills is that, mm -hmm. you know, these guys are going to be expected to be on the field. But also with that, like you said, that means some of these other guys can be gone. Yeah. So, Mar, do you think the Bills have the talent to have that rotation any longer? Right. Because we, I guess we don't know if that was a Frazier or McDermott thing. Like, we just don't know. Like, is it a good, it's a good workload management thing? Yeah, it's a great workload management. I'm sure these guys love getting paid X amount of millions of dollars to only have to play 47 percent of snaps at best. Right. Well, I mean, but, that, I think that was the draw for Von Miller to come to Buffalo was the fact that he knew he was only going to be playing 45 percent of the snaps at best. And he was right. able to extend his career a little bit longer and actually be more fresh on the field mm -hmm. than he would when in previous years when he was playing 80, 90 percent of the snaps. Right. The one thing that concerns me, though, Paul, about that, I think they could do the rotation. First of all, let me ask you answer your question. I think they may they may continue to do that to try to have fresh bodies in there that could just pin their ears back and go after the quarterback. The other thing that concerns me, mostly the, what's on the screen right now, is that you talked about Bernard, you talked about Dodson. I think Sear Neal is probably is a guy that won't be on the Buffalo Bills. Okay. And depending yeah. on the progression of Dorian Williams, like you said, if he's on the field, that you take Teron Johnson off. That's one thing that you can do if you wanted to. I think that Sean McDermott, for McDermott and or um, for McDermott and Beans sake dorian williams is going to get as many opportunities to succeed in this defense as anyone on this team and i'll tell you why the last successful linebacker that they drafted outside of the first round was matt milano mm -hmm. we all recall that was not that was not being scouting staff that did the work mm -hmm. for you know to get milano on this team mm -hmm. yeah i mean he drafted that Tremaine was, Edmonds in the first least. round yeah, he was yeah, the first, Whaley staff. Yeah, it was the Whaley staff. Edmonds was a first round pick. Now you've went Voshan Joseph, Terrell Bernard, and now you got Dorian Williams. You've wasted three or not wasted, but you've you've invested three high picks in three different linebackers. If Dorian Williams does not work, we as a fan base have to question whether or not they can evaluate linebackers outside of the first round. Because mm -hmm. this yeah. is getting a little scary now. You know what I mean? Right. Tremaine Edmonds was the guy that was your guy. Milano wasn't even scouted by you. Now you've drafted right. Voshan Joseph, Terrell Bernard, and Dorian Williams. And now you're bringing in retreads yeah, with, with right. Klein. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that is the biggest thing going into 2023 that, that concerns me. But I think because of that, because of what happened in, in history, investing high draft picks in, in the linebacker position, 
he will get as many chances as he can to succeed in, in this defense. They're yeah. going to they're going to showcase that kid. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Like you go back and you think about what were the last linebackers that, you know, you really enjoyed watching play. Lorenzo Alexander, uh, Lorenzo Alexander, Doug Whaley, right? Yep. Matt Milano, Doug Whaley. Mm-hmm. End of list. Right. That's where it stops. <laughs> like in Tremaine Edmonds was a slam dunk. The guy was an athletic freak. Right. You don't like so. Ramon Humber. There it was. <laughs> there it is. There it was. But you know, I, I think it's an important call out for for Bills fans is listen, the list that you see in front of you, that's not necessarily the list that's going to be in the starting 11. You oh, know, no, like no. it's it's just not possible. You can't you can't. You can't fix the problem by keeping, you know, by by not having a solution, right? Like it's the exact same team that you rolled out last year, and you saw what that looked like in weeks 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, mm-hmm. and through the playoffs. And there were big problems there. Yeah. Um, and it's a fully incumbent team. You have to figure out a way to make some moves and get something fresh that's going to fix the problems that you know you already have. Well, here's right? my question. I want to ask Ryan and Joe this. Is this collection of individuals on the screen that you currently see, could this team that's on the screen hold the opposing team to 24 points a game? First, I, I want to make, uh, Paul, I wanted to say this. This is not the same defense that we had on the field last year. You, you, like, you're looking at Trey White. I, I circle that name and say at no point was Trey White fully healthy last year. He didn't come that's back true. for Thanksgiving. That's true. And you don't he come back was from not, ACL injury yeah. all of a sudden just 100%. Micah Hyde was out towards the end of last year. So we're going to have injuries again. I'm not saying we're not, but I think that makes a huge difference uh, That's fair. for this defense. So, That's a fair counterpoint. You're going to uh, have another year of Kair Elam as well. You know what I mean? I, uh, yeah. 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 So I think that this defense is a little bit different than what people like, – because, because Paul, you're not the only one – like everyone's saying that, oh, this defense is the same. Mm, no, it's not. It's not. Um, and as long as they stay healthy, I think that, that this defense can absolutely – whole teams under 24 points. But when you look at the offense, most times they're not going to have to, right? Most, I, I mean, I expect this offense to average 29 points a game. This defense was put in some bad spots last year too. You know, Josh Allen, the turnovers, just just certain situations where they were just put in bad spots. And that's going to happen. Um, but when you're a defense and your team's in the red zone, and what, we had seven, eight, I forget how many turnovers we had in the red zone last year, but it was a lot. It was a lot. And when you, as as a defense, you're looking at that, you you see your team in the red zone, you figure you're getting points. You just assume, hey, we're getting points. All right. And then you don't. I think that's a big factor as well. But yeah, I think this this squad can hold teams under 24 points a game. I I counter, I say that the interception on the two yard line is the most effective coffin corner (laughs) punt in the game. Yeah. Most effective. (laughs) But how is it when you stop someone at the one yard line and your quarterback fumbles it into the end zone to get a tie game? (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember asking for a response. (laughs) (laughs) I think you can make the argument that this defense is better than the one that they had at the end of last season. Um, Yeah. You know, because keep in mind, they didn't have Von Miller at the end of last season. Um, Trey White's going to be completely healthy. Micah Hyde's going to be back for the first time since week two of last year. Mm-hmm. Kyer Elam's going to have an entire offseason of working with said Trey White. Um, if they can figure out some way, again, to mask that hole left in the middle by Tremaine Edmonds, I think you very much can make the argument that this is a better team. They're deeper at safety. They're deeper at corner because of the, the experience these guys have had. It's the exact same defensive front that they had last year. Um it's the same specialists, the same linebackers minus Tremaine Edmonds. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think can they hold them on hold a teams opposing teams under twenty four? I think absolutely they can. They've got the guys that they need to do it. Assuming they can do some things, we're assuming they're going to be able to do get pressure with four or five, fill the hole in the middle linebacker position. I'm giving McDermott a lot of benefit of the doubt in those situations. <laughs> I could hear, um, I could hear your teeth <laughs> gnashing. Yeah. But I think to I think to Joe's point, I think I could also argue that the offense is built in a way to, to make it so that either the defense doesn't have to hold them to 24 or the defense is going to have a lot more wind left in their sails as Mm -hmm. games close. Um, They're built to control the football. Damian Harris, I think is an unheralded signing for Bill's mafia. He's going to be a massive piece of this. Yeah. They really needed that. They did. You add in a mauler like Terrence, you know, who's going to, who's going to shore up the run game 
solidify the offensive front. Wide receivers are better equipped. The other thing I think to keep in mind, too, is keeping Josh Allen clean. Don't forget, Damian Harris is arguably the best pass blocking running back in the NFL. That's pro football focus time and again has rated him one of the best pass blocking um, running backs in the NFL. That's going to come in huge to, uh, when it comes to third down situations, keeping the team on the field versus sending the defense out there after a three and out, yeah. uh, which they did time and time again. And it seemed those third quarter stretches, right, where it was like they just couldn't get a first down, couldn't get the ball over midfield, the strain that that puts on the defense. And then it's like, all right, guys, now we got to lead in the fourth quarter, uh, go out there and hang on to it. I don't think mm-hmm. they're going to put the defense in that situation. I think they're going to hold teams yeah. under 24 because of the talent and because they're, they're bludgeoning the other team and they're able to, in the third and fourth quarter, just run this ball control offense where Damian Harris gets 10 touches. Uh, James Cook picks up a couple touches and they, you know, they go 10, 10 plays for, you know, seven minutes and, and punch it into the end zone. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, before we wrap this episode up, Brian, I think you make a great point uh, on paper. If you go back and look, the bills had, I think the second points, most points per drive in the NFL, but, and while that number is very impressive, right? The fact of the matter is the bills also scored an incredible amount of touchdowns last year and had whole sections of games or in whole quarters of games where they couldn't get a first down, you know, and that absolutely beats the hell out of your defense, oh, you know, yeah. it was most certainly late in games, right? When you are up and you let a team, you, you, a team backdoors 14 points on you and your defense has been on the field for 12 or 15 minutes, you know, and your offense has run six plays. That's, that's problematic, right? That's what tightens up games. And, uh, you know, that's something that Buffalo has to do a better job of is they did have multiple stretches all season long where they had consecutive three and outs just and let teams right back in late in games. It, it happened just it felt like it happened almost weekly. And I know that's not how and, it really was, thing, but it, it felt that way. Yeah. The other thing to keep in mind, too, and we go it just goes back to what I just mentioned, they are second in points per possession. They were 18th in the NFL in time of possession. Right. Well, they yeah. were they were a, they were a bottom fifty percent of the NFL, and they were the only. There were three playoff teams that were sorry, four that were that had more a higher. T- I'm sorry, a lower time of possession. It was Dallas, Miami, Minnesota, and Seattle. And you yeah, can argue that, that all barely, four of those teams have no business being in. The yeah, playoff, none of them right? being playoff so, teams. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So when it comes to legitimate contenders, they were by far the lowest. And you look at the teams that were the highest in terms of time of possession. Cincinnati was third. Philadelphia was fifth. You know, mm-hmm. Green Bay was eight, Chargers were ninth, and Kansas City was 13th. So Buffalo just, they didn't do their defense any favors last year in terms right. of time of possession. They scored a bunch of points, but they scored a bunch of points fast. They've got mm-hmm. to figure out how to score a bunch of points and hang on to the football a little bit more consistently. And it comes in that third quarter stretch, like you mentioned, Paul. They've got to figure out ways to get yeah. down in the third and, quarter. coming out of and, to Joe's, and to Joe's point, right, how many times did they give up footballs in the red zone, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it was an awful lot. Right, there were a lot of yeah. points you left on the field. Yeah, and what the, the fact is, they were second in the league in points, twenty-eight points a game, and they mm-hmm. were second in defense and giving up eighteen. That's why I just I I just threw out a number like twenty-four because I was thinking this is a team. This is a, with all of the weapons and everything that they gave to the offense. It's going to do two things. Number one, they feel that their offense is going to be the driving. You know, because I think Ryan even said this the other day you don't really see it. what's the identity of this team what mm-hmm. is this team like you go to Kansas City it's Mahomes it's mm-hmm. that's what it is it's Mahomes making stuff happen and the defense you know Spagnolo over there he's going to he's going to do stuff as well you know you look at the identity of some of these teams what is the bills identity is it just Josh Allen or what are we what are we doing here so mm-hmm. in that you could look at this you know these these names that are on the screen right now you can say listen 24 points a game yeah if 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 you're not having that lull in the third quarter where you come out and the, the the opposing team has the ball for two possessions for you know 12 minutes, that's crazy. And they end up scoring 14. That, that can't happen. So mm-hmm. uh, I think the whole philosophy both on offense and defense is going to change for this team this year. And McDermott's going to be like, okay, I'm going to take over the defense. This is what we're going to do. They're going to score all the points. We just can't get drug up and down the field. You know, mm-hmm. We're going to treat this like the 1998 Vikings. Like, this is what we're going to do this year. You know what I mean? So I think that's what's going to happen. With all the investment that they made in the offense, they're going to have the offense drive the show. And they're going to say, if the offense does not drive drive the bus, uh, 
Ken Dorsey's going to be looking for employment somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what they're doing. They're pushing everything to the middle of the table, including the coaches, because McDermott's on the line too now. Mm -hmm. If this defense gives up, yeah, gives up 25 points a game and McDermott's gave up 18 and it's the same collection of characters. Sean, what are we doing here? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very, very, it's a very, very 2023 is a very, very pivotal year with the, for the Buffalo Bills. I believe if their defense holds teams, like you said, Paul, last year, they were, they held teams to 18. Even if you bump that up another touchdown, they hold teams to 24 instead mm -hmm. the way the offense played last year. And, and you can argue they left points on the board, this and that they still finished with 12 wins. They would have still finished with 12 wins instead of 13. Mm -hmm. So they lose one more football game had they held teams at 24 instead of 18. So the defense does not need to be superhuman when it comes mm -hmm. to that. They can be middle of the road like we've seen in, in Kansas City for year after year. So I think mm -hmm. you, you have to stop putting so much pressure on the defense to go out and win you football games because for so long you've had to in Buffalo. But now you've got mm -hmm. an offense that should go out and win you football games. You have to go out Mm -hmm. and, and take care of business on the offensive side of the football. That's the league that you play in now. So that's the yeah, reality. The that's a great point. Give up points and that's okay. Cause we got a guy on the other side that when it comes blow for blow, I'll take him over mm -hmm. arguably any other quarterback in the league. Mahomes is the only other one in the conversation for me that I wouldn't may not take in a shootout when it comes to, to, to offensive teams against Buffalo. And I think, I think I want to close the episode on this, right? So thank you very much, Joe, Ryan, Mario. Um, but I think, I think you're I think you're absolutely right, Ryan. From a from a perspective difference, right? The defense doesn't have to win you games, it has to win you possessions. That's what the defense has to do in the NFL now. It's not necessarily about stopping the other team, it's about stealing that possession from them, right? How many possessions can you steal? How many three and outs can you generate? How many turnovers can you generate? Everything else is window dressing, right? It really, really is because the goal now is to get the football in the hands of your quarterback that's why there's how many quarterbacks making percentages of billions of dollars now right mm -hmm. like nfl franchises have clearly said that the quarterback is the most important player on the team and is they're, they're paid accordingly and the defense's job is to get that football back in the quarterback's hands there's no way around it that's the way the nfl is structured now and mm -hmm. that's what defenses do they're there to generate three and outs, those quick turnovers, those quick possessions, and they're there to steal the football from the from an opposing offense, right? Get that football back in their quarterback's hands. Hey, Paul from Hashtag Sports, that's Mario. Damn it, I do this weatherman thing so bad. That's Mario. That's Joe. That's Ryan. Uh, Paul from Hashtag. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.